Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to sit down and play with some more new makeup. We have a ton of new launches, drugstore, and then now we're seeing the high-end launches starting to drop. There's a couple products that I've used and I'm not really loving, but I'm gonna demo and give you my thoughts. Of course, I will link everything that I use today down below in my description box. If you enjoy first impression videos, give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. And let's go ahead and get into trying a bunch of new makeup. Before we get into the makeup, I want to thank City Beauty for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I'm gonna tell you about some of my favorite products because they have a sale going on right now, which is pretty incredible. You can use my code BABSBEAUTY to get 35% off site-wide, February 14th through the 19th. After that, my code will drop to 15% off site-wide. So they have a ton of products, a lot of skincare products, anti-aging. If you're dealing with droopy eyelids or you wanna firm your neck, pretty much any area you want to work on, they have a product to focus on that. Now my absolute favorite product from them is the plumping lip glosses. These are smoothing, hydrating, super high shine, and they plump your lips. They're not painful and they have so many shades. So if you like a gloss that's just clear or has a little bit of a shimmer to it, they have those. And if you like a full pigment nude or pink, they have those. So today I'm going to go in with Tinsel Town. This one is a clear with a little bit of a pink shimmer. So because this gives me hydration and it's more sheer, this would be one that I would use before my makeup or just around the house if I wanted to sort of treat my lips. But you can see how shiny my lips are and they really coat the lips. So it's a thicker formula that it's not gonna slide all over. They also have hyaluronic acid and jojoba oil, so they're definitely gonna hydrate, but 10 out of 10, these are my favorite from City Beauty, hands down. Another one of my longtime favorites is the Line Smoothing Hydro Masks. These are incredible. The feeling of it is very cool, and I love the texture of the actual mask because it just conforms to your face. It's not slipping all over. You don't have to lay down when you're wearing this, so you really only wear it for 15 or 20 minutes, and I'm telling you, it feels incredible. And another thing I like about it is it doesn't leave a sticky film so you don't feel like you have to wash any residue off whatever's left I just pat it into the skin it lays beautifully under makeup so this is one of my favorite 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 products from them and then one of the newer products I've been trying is the body balm this is firming and smoothing of course hydrating it smells really light and fresh I love the texture of this it's really almost like a gel body butter hybrid and it really just goes into the skin. I like that it doesn't leave a residue. It gives you a nice hydration, but it's not sticky. It has ingredients like niacinamide and also a lipid compound, which supports your skin barrier. It does seem to really smooth the skin out, and I like that it doesn't have a greasy feel, so I can immediately get dressed and not feel like my clothes are sticking to it, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. So if you're on the hunt for a firming, smoothing, and hydrating body balm, Highly recommend checking this out. And again, you can also look on their website. They have a ton of products, as I said, and they really do have just great products to target specific aging concerns. So if you wanna check out anything from City Beauty, highly recommend these products. 35% off your entire order with the code BABSBEAUTY. So I'll have my discount code links and all of the information in my description box. Thank you again to City Beauty for working with me on today's video. And let's go ahead and get into trying new makeup. All right, so now that my lips are plumped and hydrated, I wanna go in with this palette, and when I say I want to, I really don't want to, but I had put a pull up on my community tab, seeing if you guys wanted to see just a demo or my thoughts on the Natasha Denona Love Face Palette. And when I last checked the poll, it was still at a good 50-50. I mean, it was 50-50 for days. So I was like, do I even include this? Now this product is super strange because Natasha's not even announced this. I was able to pick this up, I believe, was it look fantastic? And then poof, it was gone and we have heard anything and as of today it is Valentine's Day so you would think that this would have been launched so inside you have 
four mattes, one shimmer or metallic, you have a highlighter, and then you have a cream blush. Now there's some things I noticed with this palette. So the shadows in here, I didn't have any issues with these three mattes, the lighter mattes. This matte I found to be hard to work with, patchy, and really dry. This shimmer doesn't have really any pigment behind it, so it's almost just like sparkle, but with that, it goes all over your cheeks. The highlighter, I have not tried yet because I didn't get that far, but it seems like, you know, a nice standard powder highlighter from Natasha, but the problem that I think a lot of people are gonna have with this, and I'm shocked that I did, is that the cream blush, there's just something off with the tone. I am a huge fan of baby pink blushes, and something about this color just is not flattering. It almost has a purple undertone, but it's just, something's off. Also, I've noticed that this is much more creamy than her original or normal formula. Like immediately when you touch this, it's emollient. And with that, it definitely does not play well with powder. And I find it hard to work with regardless. So for me, this is just not something that I would recommend. And I'm actually shocked because I'm the pink lover. But today I'm just going to go in and play with like a couple shades. I'm not even gonna demo the blush because it will truly mess up my makeup. Really just wanted to give you my thoughts, use a couple shades and then move on because it seems like a lot of you really weren't even interested. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the light pink. This is probably my favorite shade in the entire palette. And I'm just going to blend this in my crease, focusing just more on the inside. It's pretty powdery in the pan, but that doesn't bother me. I didn't struggle with this shade or the other lighter mattes, but something just funky with that deep matte and the blush just sort of makes me not want to reach for this palette overall, unfortunately. So next I'm gonna grab this shade right here, and I'm just gonna use the same brush and just sort of blend this into that pink. And again, I didn't really struggle with this shade. I found it to be pigmented and blended really pretty. There's just a couple shades in here that really just weren't favorites and for this price point and having only you know a limited amount of shades to play with, I need everything to work seamlessly. And then I'm gonna go into this pink matte. Again, same brush. I'm not really trying to do a whole lot of detail work. But I'm just gonna put this a little bit lower. And then instead of using this shade, just because I wasn't a fan with the colors in the palette, I'm gonna try the highlighter. Hmm, I don't know if I've ever used these on my eyes. It's a very like slick, almost silicone feel. So I'm not a huge fan of this, but I'm just gonna roll with it. Well, that escalated quickly. I could not get my wings to look right, and every time I do that, I just keep going higher and higher and bigger and bigger. So, you know, is anybody surprised? It is what it is. So I wanna go in with one of the new pairs of lashes that is a new collaboration with Risa Does Makeup and BK Beauty. So huge congratulations to both Lisa and Risa for this collaboration. So I'm excited to try one of these out. I think I'm gonna go for the more intense styles. So we have Martini, which is a half lash. We also have Day Club. This is just a really fluttery soft lash. I have really kind of big eyes and I need a little bit of va va boom so we also have stiletto which is definitely more dramatic and then I would say the most dramatic is Vegas and I'm gonna be using Vegas today so I will link these down below in case you're interested but these are synthetic and they're made by BK Beauty which is one of my favorite brush brands so these look really pretty. I like how they go a little bit longer on the outer corners and they look like they have a nice kind of like fluttery feel to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these on. I hope that they're big enough for this liner and then we'll get into complexion. Okay, so lashes are on. They were really easy to apply. They're very thin, very thin band as well. So if you're familiar with like Ardell's, 
they feel like that. I typically wear a thicker band, but I think it's easier to work with a thin band, especially if you have like hooded eyes, which I know Risa has, or you are just new to lashes, but I really like the style. They're nice and long and fluttery. So I wanna go in and start on complexion. I'm just gonna use my Freck moisturizer as usual, just to prep my skin. I'm gonna also use a little bit of my Hourglass Primer that I love, just in my T-zone, to smooth out pores. I feel like my skin's sort of acting up right now and I'm not sure why, but. Now that the skin is prepped, I wanna go in with the foundation. So this is called the I Am Magic Natural Radiance Foundation. It has a natural radiant finish, medium coverage, and long wear. That's the claims. So I have the shade Martinique, which was the deepest one they sent me. So I hope that this works. I did pull some down my neck. They also did send a sponge. So I'm gonna try that on one side and then a brush on the other. Now I have just used this and swatched it a little bit, not on my face, but like on my hand and again down my chest. This has a strong fragrance and I don't know why they would put that in there. So this is what the shade looks like. So just a little light. It does feel like a whipped sort of feeling, but I don't really love the pump either. It's one of those pumps that I feel like you have to like squeeze and pump, so it can get a little bit, I don't know, just irritating to use. But I wanna start on this side and we'll use the sponge. I make sure that I have to wring it out. Okay, so let's go ahead and start applying. So you see how it, just looks pretty yellow and light, just for my self tan. Definitely, I would say is medium, even higher coverage. I'm wondering if this oxidizes. It feels pretty dry. And the smell, okay, the smell is watermelon. Why in a foundation? This feels dry, like, Hmm. Like I almost feel like I'm getting better blending if I like. Okay, this is bizarre. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a foundation brush. Yeah, this like dries down. Ooh, okay. Which, I mean, not necessarily a bad thing, but I just wasn't expecting that because it's supposed to be radiant. The scent. Why? All right, I'm confused because now I'm going back in with the sponge. I don't know how to feel about this. Okay, so I finally got the foundation blended the best I could. I honestly feel like I just ran five miles. Like that's the effort it took to blend this in. I don't know, it won't blend seamlessly. The color is definitely not right. It's definitely like yellow, but I don't know. Something funky is going on with this. This is one of the more difficult foundations I've tried in a long time. I can already tell this is gonna be like a no. I almost wanted to wash this off, but I'm like, you know what? No, we're doing a trying new makeup, so let's just keep moving on. I know I'm super late to the party, but I do wanna test out the eye brightener in the shade Light from Rare Beauty. I was thinking about doing this before, but you know, I just got sidetracked, so it has one of those metal Applicators. This is not going to be a concealer. It's just supposed to brighten. So I want to see if I notice a big difference before we go in with concealer. So I'm just going to go ahead and blend this out. Yeah, it blends out pretty sheer. Like in terms of coverage, I would say barely any. But just looking at my under eye, it almost is giving a similar look to let's say like the Becca under eye corrector, but like half the coverage. So it's really just going to brighten up and it does feel hydrating, but I need coverage. Like if I'm gonna go in with something, am I oxidizing? I feel like I'm oxidizing. Things are happening. I'm going orange. Hopefully it's just not my camera settings. Something is going on. You know, we're having a rough trying new makeup today, but that's just, you know, how these go. So the Rare Beauty mm, didn't really do much like for me to want to reach for it and add another step to my routine. 
For concealer, I'm still testing out the Stay Naked Quickie from Urban Decay. I have a deeper shade. This is 30NN. The one I tried in my last video was 20NN. So this one definitely is more my shade. But I also find this to be pretty drying. But I'm hoping that a shade that matches me better, I will like it better. It's just kind of crazy because when I think something is drying, it's like, whoa, because I have combo oily skin. This, Juvia's Place Foundation. Okay. I'm trying not to have a meltdown. We are going to be just fine. This is so bizarre. Ugh, okay. We're just gonna roll with it. Don't really love the base, but we're gonna go on to the next product, which is the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Bronzer. So I bought the shade Seaside Shimmer. I hope, you know, we're already looking crazy. Let's just take it another step further. So I love the Luminous Putty Blushes. I'm not sure how I will feel about a Luminous Bronzer. I do think the shade is good, the one that I chose. They did since send me a PR box with a couple shades, but I feel like this shade is gonna be just fine for me. So to apply, I'm gonna use my BK Beauty 109, and I'm just gonna do what I always do, which is just like work off of my hand, just because I don't know how pigmented this product is, although I feel like it's not overly pigmented. Pretty comparable to their original putty bronzers. They're more of like a buildable formula. This shade is quite warm when I swatch it, but on the skin, I feel like it's pulling a little more neutral maybe. Yeah, so this is definitely one of those that you don't have to be careful with just because it is way more buildable than a lot of cream bronzers. It's blending just fine, which Hallelujah, because I was expecting that Juvia's foundation to throw everything off, but it seems like everything's blending fine. I'm not even gonna try to put stuff over powder today, so we're just gonna do it the safe way. Okay, so bronzer is on. It was easy to work with even over this base that I'm struggling with, and I don't think that it's too shimmery. It's sort of in between. I wouldn't say it's as shimmery as, let's say, like the Tower 28 Bronzinos, but it definitely does have like a glow to it, but I think it's pretty. I think if you're somebody that likes a glowy look, you would really like this just because it seems like more of like a natural throw it on and go. Probably not the best with the eye makeup I have on, but it is what it is. So I wanna go in next and try these. So I purchased two of these. You guys seemed really excited about them. The Vive Sunset Blush Bombs. So these are luminous liquid blushes. So I got the shade Rosa and Cherub, which is like a pink. So this is Rosa. And I feel like just from seeing this product, it's not overly pigmented. And I think you definitely don't wanna put this over powder. That one's definitely more punchy, the pink. So I'm gonna go in with, should we try, let's try the neutral one first called Rosa. So I went ahead and grabbed a clean 109 and I just put some on my hand and I'm just going to work the product into the brush and then start applying. Ooh, that's pretty. Now this is definitely a neutral shade. This is one that I would probably put like all over my cheeks and nose, almost as if I was like in the sun. Again, probably not with the eyeshadow I have on, but it's definitely like a little sun-kissed color. Blends easily. Again, I would not put this over powder and it has a light luminosity, but it doesn't feel like it's enhancing your texture or anything like that. I'm gonna try next the pink, which we all know I'm probably gonna love. So I'm just working this into the brush. Okay, so the pink is definitely more punchy, but I still feel like all of the shades lean pretty, uh, I would say like neutral, very like natural, I've been in the sun vibes. I'm just kind of like putting it everywhere now, mixing them. So you can definitely see that I have a lot of glow going on, but because I'm going to like powder over this, I'm not that concerned. 
Okay, so now it's time to powder and hopefully everything will come together. So I'm gonna be using a few different powders. I'm gonna start off with my Huda Beauty. Now I'm just gonna use this in my T-zone, like right under my eyes. And I'm going to set right under my eyes. This is a Huda Beauty Puff. And I'm gonna pull this down the sides of my nose and then my chin area. Okay, and then my go-to powder for just setting creams is the Dior. This is in the color 2N. So I'm just gonna flip over the puff and I'm going to take the powder and then just sort of press it on the inside of my hand so I don't have too much. And I just wanna go over anywhere that I put a cream, like bronzer, blush. This is like one of the only powders that doesn't lift. Okay, so brows are done, but along with the foundation, they came out with a powder. So I have a couple shades here. I think I'm gonna take this color, it's called Madrid, and I'm just gonna use the sponge and just sort of like, try to like clean up and let that sort of bake. And then I'm gonna go in and use the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter. I was gonna use the Natasha Denona, but I think I'm just kind of over that palette. I'm kind of over everything today. Uh, but I'm gonna go in with the Glow Glide highlighter. This is in the color Champagne Glow. So I picked this up from Sephora. So I'm just gonna take a Real Techniques, Techniques brush and I'm gonna load it up and then tap off. And I really like how this formula is pretty buildable. So you can do more of like a subtle glow or you can really make it intense. But if I wanted to really punch it up, I mean, it becomes blinding. Okay, for some reason I feel like I just need more blush. I feel like after powdering I lost that. So I'm gonna go in with this Tarte one. I am in love with this blush. This is the Energy Blush. I love it. Like it is up there with the Dior blush for me. It's a gorgeous, look at that, baby pink. But you don't have to build it as much. Just more pigmented. Then the Dior, I still love the Dior, but this one is just like super quick. You get that pretty pink baby doll look that I love. I love this blush. Okay, so to finish off lips, I'm gonna go in with ABH in Sandstone. And I'm gonna take this in because I'm just gonna use that lip gloss from City Beauty and no lipstick, because it's so pigmented. Okay, to finish off, I was gonna go in with watermelon, but I really think this will be the best option because we have a lot of color going on. So I'm gonna use Tokyo Kiss, which is like a really light nude. Okay, so this is Tokyo Kiss, but I can't resist. I wanna try to add watermelon. This is so gorgeous. Just to add a little bit of like a pink shine. Okay, that's beautiful. Okay guys, so here's my finished makeup look, trying out a bunch of new products. Let's go over them quickly. I don't wanna be too repetitive. This Natasha Denona palette, I just do not recommend. I think the blush is gonna work for very few people. There's just something weird about it. The highlighter is pretty, but nothing special. And then as I said, this gets patchy, and then this color, I don't know. I just feel like it doesn't go with the palette. Overall, for the price tag, I usually love Natasha, but this is probably one of my least favorite palettes that she's ever come out with. Now, if you have hooded eyes, or you're new to lashes, or you just wanna try some synthetic lashes that are good for beginners or hooded eyes, mature eyes, definitely check out the BK Beauty and Risa lashes. They have thin bands, which again, I usually go for the thicker band, but they were super easy to apply, very long and fluttery. I'm trying to make sure that they stay up, you know, to cover my liner, but I think they're a great option for those of you that like a little bit more of a natural look because I'm typically more of the glam type of gal, but I do think these lashes look beautiful. No surprise that I'm just not a fan of this foundation from Juvia's Place. The scent, the thick feel, the kind of patchiness, just not wanting to stick in certain areas, and then sort of streaking in others. 
I don't know, it feels dry, but yet it's supposed to be radiant. I do feel like there's some sort of like radiance in terms of like glow or illumination, but it's a dry formula that really kind of sticks down and then you can't move it. Just too much fuss. I do actually like the sponge though, so I'll continue to play with this, but the foundation is a no. I'm not really sure how to feel about the Rare Beauty Brightener. I do like the cooling wand. It feels really nice and I think enough product comes off, but I just feel like I want more coverage. Even if I'm just gonna put this on with nothing else, just to brighten, I do want a little bit of concealing as well, so I would have liked to see more coverage. I don't think it's a bad product, but for me, if I'm gonna put something on, it's gotta make like a really big difference. For some reason, I can't make my mind up about this Urban Decay concealer. As I apply it, it feels very dry, and I just feel like it's going to enhance my texture, and then once I set it, I feel like it looks pretty good. Let me know your experience down below with this. Just because the coverage is good, it's very smooth, but when I'm applying it, it just feels dry, and I don't know if that's because I'm used to more hydrating concealers that have come out recently. Moving on to the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Bronzer. I think this was really easy to work with. It's not overly luminous like the Tower 28. It's a little bit less than that, so I feel like more people would enjoy it. Very buildable, just like the other putty bronzers. And honestly, it blended really easily, especially given the base that I have on, so I'm really not mad at this. I also also really like the Vive blushes. Now these are a little bit more subdued than I typically like. When I swatch them, the pink definitely looks brighter, but I feel like I actually like this shade better, which is called Rosa. It's almost like that burnt, sunburnt vibe, and with a product like this that's kind of natural and you just blend it on and go, I think I would really opt for this one. This is definitely a balmy formula. It's not overly pigmented, and it's not going to give you like crazy crazy intense pops on your cheeks, but this is really easy to work with. I would not use this over powder though, just keep that in mind, but I think this is gonna become just like an everyday favorite to just blend on and go. As I said before, I'm not wearing a ton of highlighter, but I do think the Charlotte Tilbury is a beautiful formula. Still not going to become a top pick for me. I just have my holy grails and I feel like it's good, but it's definitely not going to be out the best of the best. Now this is a new holy grail. I've talked about it briefly but I'm telling you, if you like baby doll pink blushes, if you like the Dior blush but you feel like you had to like build it up and it was just kind of time consuming, you will love this. This, I don't know. There's like kind of in my head, I'm like, if I had to only choose one, I don't know which one I would choose. It is that good. This is holy grail, like instant. And I've tried the Too Faced one that everybody's going crazy about and I don't love it nearly as much as this. The Too Faced can be a little chalky. This one just gives you that gorgeous, beautiful baby doll cheeks. This is amazing. And then in terms of the Juvia's Place powder, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I would definitely prefer other powders to this. Let's say like the one size. I love that pressed powder. I also am a huge fan of the J-Cat Beauty powder, which is more affordable. So this is just an okay product, but not standing out to me. And then of course, I am in love with the City Lips Plumping Glosses. Look how shiny these glosses are. And I love that you can kind of mix them. So watermelon is like my most used just because I love a pink lip, but they have a ton of nude shades. And again, they have like a clear and more sheer shades if you don't like full pigment. But I think that's everything for this trying new makeup. I feel like I just went on the ride of my life that I really didn't want to get on. And I was like, hello, can I get off this ride because things were rough. I feel like the end result is okay. I'm not like wowed, but I don't hate it. So let me know what you think down below if you've tried any of these products. I will link everything in my description box, but I'd love to hear if you want to try any of these or if you did and what your experience was. Also, don't forget to check out City Beauty and take advantage of that sale. 35% off your entire order with the code BABSBEAUTY until February 19th and then 15% after that. So all the information will be down below. If you enjoyed this first impression video, give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. Thank you guys again so much for watching my videos. I'll see you in the next one.